whenever you're ready. Three, two, one, get it. <laughs> We did a hundred of these going off at the same time. I think we're gonna need a lot of fire extinguishers. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we had enough. Maybe a little more. Perfect. Oh my god! Oh! We're about to light off all hundred mortars at the same time right now. Nobody try this at home. Oh my god, bro! That's what happens to you 100 at the same time. Sorry. Did you like that? I don't know. So my buddy Jeff drove all the way from California with the truck that we played tag with, and he also brought a jet ski. Yeah! This is an electric winch, so all I have to do is this. And it literally pulls me. Go. Oh, dude. dude, that was sick! <laughs> Oh my God. I still got it. So something my dad doesn't like to tell everyone is that he is actually a professional golfer. He says he's not a professional, but he's in the senior PGA. U.S. Senior Open. You blew it. And today I'm going to be using all of my land to create a golf course for him so he can come here and practice so we can spend some quality time together. See my dad's reaction of like his son building him like a little golf course. I think that'd be cool. Whatever you love, imagine like someone just builds that for you, but you can use that at like their house, you know? I don't like love, love golfing, but I love doing it with him. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, look at you. You see the flag? You're so cute. You see yeah. the further one over there? Look. Oh my God, look at you. I made a driving range for you. <laughs> How cool. Oh, right, we got Robert Funk up at the tee. He's about to hit his shot, about a 300 yard shot. Nice shot! Wow, that one was really close. From 1 to 10, how do you like it? 11. And how can I make it better? <laughs> Can't make it better, it's perfect. So, I saw a video of a bunch of basketballs exploding. Oh! I wanted to find out how that works, so I bought over 20 basketballs for me to explode inside of my garage. Nope, 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 nope. Oh my god. Dude, it jumped out so far! High. That's exploding. Oh! <laughs> that was so sick! Oh, it sounds like it's gonna explode! Oh! Yeah! Don't worry, I got my safety helmet on now. Kobe. Oh! <laughs> I hit the light! Oh! Oh! <laughs> All basketballs are gonna die when I'm around! Oh! Okay, I wasn't ready for that one. Basketball doggy! Potato cannon I made a couple years ago. I'm hoping this one doesn't explode too. A potato gun exploded in the hands of a Lincoln man. Alright, just up the PSI to as far as it literally can go. We're just gonna do it straight up in the air and see what happens. Oh, I see it. Oh, sorry, your truck is getting hit. Someone told me that I should put potatoes in the refrigerator. I'm gonna do that. Look at the dent on it. It actually yeah, held up pretty nice. Today I'm having a car meet at my house. It's something I've always wanted to do. I love cars. I just moved here to Texas and I wanted to get more of a community. We have people lined up out the gate to have fun. I just thought it'd be sick now that I have like all this acreage and land, like might as well create more of a community around here with all the people that enjoy and love cars like I do. Hey babe. Yeah. Did you hear? The block was hot. Ow! <laughs> Give that to me. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no! Ow! <laughs> Last week I told everyone uh, I was looking for roommates, so I'm looking over the applications now. 2002. Whoa, that still seems so young. 2002, like I was born in 96, so it seems like anybody who's born in 96 is is like my age. So the goal is to have someone that is just a friend, you know, a companion, you know, a BFF, where we can cuddle at night and have good laughing jokes as we eat popcorn because Hannah's not always here. Uh. This is surfing a wave, and this is also surfing a wave. 
These waves have inconsistencies, and it can be hard to surf these waves, especially if you're a beginner like me. But luckily for me, I was invited to Surf Ranch, a park that was created by a professional surfer named Kelly Slater. Let's try to hit some waves. launching my girlfriend out of my human catapult that I built. Yeah, I don't have life insurance. I'm worried for her. I really am. I'm scared. I want her to be safe. Even though this is a gnarly video, Hannah wants to do this. She wants to have a little more extreme side for her Instagram. So go ahead and give Hannah a follow on Instagram. We're gonna have you sit in it, get your feeling for what you want to do. What last words do you have to say? I will be here for you. <laughs> you want to do this, right? I think I want to do it. Yeah, why not? You will I just wanted them to hear that you said that you want to do it. Because oh. I'm not pressuring you into doing it. No, you're not pressuring me into doing it. I, I'm going to be like, three, two, one, now! And you're going to do this. And you're going to hold this position until you hit the water. Okay? <laughs> it's not funny. It's su it's super serious behavior. <laughs> Are you scared? I don't think so. I just want to do it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to try. Okay. All right, I'm launching my girlfriend off of my human catapult. You ready, baby? All right, three, two, one. Extend your legs, baby. Ready now. Extend your legs, baby. Ready now. Oh. oh, yo, 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 here, take this, take this. You good, babe? I don't know what wrong, but Hannah extended her legs when she needed to and she literally flipped the opposite way. So while I lived at my parents' house, I took out a car for my best friend. This was one of the cars we had just done some crazy stuff with. <laughs> So I decided to go down to my parents' house, grab this car, and have some fun with it. So I've made one of my most viral videos from doing this. Now we're going to be doing it three times bigger. Oh, what? No! We're about to launch here a 200 XL bottle rockets. We got the flame suit on, so YouTube, you can uh, chill out, because we, uh, we cool. Now it's time for the next one. That's a lot, bro. That's so much. We are sending off all of these at the same time. All right, you ready, Nate? You getting it all set up? All right. You all good to light it? Give her a good old pull. Everyone get back. It's going to take so long. All right, so we're behind this safety barricade right here, and we're watching from here. I told you, bro. This is a firework show. We just set up our own fire right. show. When it starts to look like a bonfire. Glad we had a successful time with the mortars, but now it's time to step it up and do the 500 Roman candles and see how this goes. This is 500 Roman candles lit at the same time.
was so cool. This is a toy car. And today, I'm gonna be turning one of these into a real life size car. Not this one, but one like it. Yeah, I'm in town, I'm coming your way, just wait up. Me and my team ain't taking no out. Caperin, don't do that, that's my vehicle. No, okay, let's not hit that one. <laughs> it's the no, oh my oh. god. Yeah, we going out town with a flight in the morning, so this I'm just gonna This is gonna be very nice. Everyone, so, okay, so everyone shut the f up! Yeah, we're just not finishing up. We're gonna take this slow, because it's gonna be very fun, and I can see us already taking this just 20 miles an hour and go really gnarly, really quickly. <laughs> 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 this is the first ever like good working crazy car. Walmart and they have their own auto care center, but it's in the back of Walmart. They do basic things like oil changes to tire changes. But if you didn't know, this place has gotten a really bad rep for their work. So today, I'm gonna use my hundred thousand dollar car to find out if they can service my race car or if they're gonna ruin it. So wish me luck. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so the tech is gonna go underneath the car. We're gonna get to see the reaction to everything underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. He said, after we're done, we're gonna take the back lot and rip it. How'd you like that? 100,000. Oh my god, yeah, me too. Awesome. awesome. Wow. Very looking over the car and not being a you know a certified mechanic, Walmart did pretty good. For the past five years, I have been perfecting my skills to becoming a professional race car driver or stunt driver. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in building the perfect drift car. If my passengers aren't absolutely scared for their life, can I really consider myself a professional? So today I'm gonna be taking Drew Dirksen, one of my best friends, out on my drift car. Yeah. Yeah. I have to show you that this thing is actually capable of drifting too. How do we do that? Right, we're gonna go into the driveway. Ah. Oh, it's not. driver who's ever been caught in a speed trap. Who doesn't know the frustration of rolling right past a speed trap? High gas prices and speed traps. Imagine you're driving 70 miles an hour on the highway and the speed drops to 45 and you're greeted by cops. This is what's called a speed trap. But what people don't realize is that there are small towns all across America that pull people over for absolutely no reason. And this is Eustis, a small town in Texas that I got pulled over at for basically no reason. 
So today, I'm going to be investigating why towns do this and how you can avoid traps like these that are all over America. So this is one of the main spots the cops sit. So you saw that right when we went up the hill, it turned from 75 or 70 to 55 miles an hour. And right when you go over that crest, the cop sits right here under this tree. So when people come into town, they get caught. Right when you see the sign, you have to be going 55 miles an hour. So slam on your brakes, do whatever it takes to get that so you don't get your ticket. After learning a lot more about where the cops strategically sit to give everyone tickets, I thought it'd be a great time for me to go into the town of Eustis and ask the residents what they think. Do you think it's like a speed trap? town here uh, kind of. I heard that like when you come through this town that maybe a lot of people get like pulled over and stuff like that Ooh, speed one. like where like the main spots they hide at um, coming down the hill coming down the hill they gave so many tickets here that for a whole year that we weren't we didn't get pulled over out here because of it like what so. have you heard any really crazy stories from people that live in here no. yeah this is definitely a speed trap that's town. interesting there's a lot of speed traps around here and we're trying to make sure it doesn't happen and make sure it doesn't happen to you too just like it happened to me about two weeks ago and this is how that went. Okay, we got pulled over in the Honda. <sighs> me, bro. How you doing? Oh, Hi there, sir. You used to, got driver's license, proof of insurance. Yes, sir. Living here now? There was no reason why he pulled me over at all. He saw my car and immediately thought to follow me and question me. I wasn't speeding or doing anything wrong. So that's what made me wonder. Why do they do this? And do they do this to everyone? He definitely pulled it over just because of the way it looked. So when I was coming through Eustis, I stopped right there at the gas station. And basically, I made the decision. I saw them start coming after me, and I wasn't speeding. Because if I was speeding, they could have just came up to the gas station and pulled me over right there. Because I was it was a moving violation. But they saw me, and they stopped. And they just drove around the gas... Look at Look at it. What? Look at Look at Look at Look at Look at it's literally happening right now. No way. It literally just happened. Do so you think I should go over there and ask them? No. The cops? Or not right now. No. <laughs> Wait. Hey, can I ask you? Can I ask you something real quick? So, I was wondering, like, is do you think Eustis is known for, like, a speed trap town? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of known for that. We'll step out of the way. But they, they kind of speed trap people here, but, like, how do people avoid it? You okay. can't. But why do people, like, do you know why why officers do do that or why certain towns do that? No, I really don't. Damn. Yeah, okay. they just do it. Yeah, you don't care if I film, right? Uh, you don't okay. care if I film? Okay, cool. It's just a little microphone. Yeah. Just was something that I was interested in because I got pulled over in this thing and I wasn't doing anything. That's why I was like, oh, why did that happen? So. Yeah, just go speed limit, man. Yeah, of course, I, of course. <laughs> I do, I do. Thank you. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks for the service. My dream has always been to own a Corvette. And even when I was a kid, I was playing a game called Need for Speed and I absolutely fell in love with the C6. So when I turned 18, the newest version of the Corvette was released, and I made my dream come true and bought my first ever Corvette, the C7. It became the staple of my channel and even the Funk Bros, until, unfortunately, one day, I had to sell it. But even though selling that car was a stepping stone to where I'm at now, at my dream house in Texas, there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss having it. So I began my search for my next dream Corvette. The only problem is, the specific Corvette that I was looking for ran anywhere from 65K to 80, which was too much. So I thought back to my childhood and remembered the car that I always wanted, the C6. However, I was still finding myself running into the same issue. They ran for almost 45K, so I needed to find a better deal. I started looking on salvage car websites like SCA Auction, Better Bid, and Copart. And after a lot of searching, I found a car. <laughs> No way. But then it slipped through my fingers. <sighs> so it didn't look good for that one car that I was looking at. I'm hoping that one pops up that isn't in too horrible condition for me to take on. So after weeks of looking, I found the perfect car. It was absolutely perfect. This car was in such great condition. It was a wide body, grand sport with a clean body. But it has mechanical damage. So it literally could be anything mechanical in the car. But it looks perfect for what I'm looking for. It is an awesome car and it's coming down to the price looking actually quite good for what I'm wanting. So basically at this moment, the car is at $7,000. Damn, this car is about, this car is going up. At the next moment, it's at $9,000. Damn, and it went up 2,000 extra dollars. So if I could walk away with at least getting it for 11,000, I think it could be worth it. I'm gonna call Jason, he's the broker. Uh, he's basically doing the bidding for me. So in order to buy and bid on any car, you're gonna need a broker. Oh. Hey, hey Jason, how you doing? Hey, I just wanted to check on uh, that car with you and kind of look over it. Still got like 80 minutes. I just looked at it like two minutes ago. He said 80 minutes still. And during this time, I'm gonna be in a meeting. 
so I won't be able to watch through the entire process as Jason is bidding. But I did tell Jason what I was willing to pay for it, and he's gonna be sticking to that. And while I'm sitting here waiting to know if my bid went through, or if everything is going good, while he let me in the dark, I just had to sit and wait, and the anticipation was killing me. Sitting here while I was in this meeting, wondering if I have just purchased my dream car or not. We'll get back to you on all those, uh, on those answers, and look forward to continue working with you. And right when my meeting was over... No! No way! I just got off the call. I got it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the winning bid of a 12-8. No way. 12-8 is a little high, but I am ecstatic at this point. I've got myself a project car, something I get to look forward to. And it has been years since I've had something fun for me to work on. <laughs> can't believe it. No way. Go pick it up tomorrow. Damn. This is nuts. Holy crap. Damn, bro. Look at these cars. Look at them cars, bro. He probably made a bad decision. What's wrong with the window? It was not even like that in the photos. Holy sh! But she's so pretty. Oh my god. What's up, man? That's uh, it's my car you got there. Hey, you wanna put her down? Jesus Christ, my man. That's gonna be a um, a no-no. It's a great-looking car, though. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Window looks cracked. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're gonna put, you'll put it in? Hell yeah, thank you. This guy literally just said to me when I'm done looking at the car that he's gonna pick it up with his forklift and put it inside of my trailer. Which is crazy because now I don't have to find out if my winch is gonna work or not. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, there's a little carbon fiber wing. Look at that. It's carbon fiber. It's probably fake. So now that I'm done looking at the car, I literally waved down one of the guys there and they came over there with their big forklift and picked up the car to be put in the trailer. And this process was very tedious because not only do they have to set the car in the right place is that I'm not going to be able to move this car anymore. This is going to be a stressful strap, bro. No more driving the Honda every day. Woo! All right, so there's there's one sign of not good. So we definitely need to get this thing up on a lift. That's oil right there. It said primary damage was the engine, and that's definitely telling me that there is an oil leak with this car, and that there's definitely edge, like damage within the Holy engine. Holy sh! Oh. Right Dude, look at the hole in the fucking motor. Oh, oh my shit. god! There's a fat hole in this. Like, oh my yeah, god, a rod something. shot through. Yeah. Oh my god! I don't know why I'm happy about this. I'm not. But like, holy crap! I can literally see the bottom crank! So what we found underneath the car is that a rod went through the block. And what that means is the engine is completely exploded and we have to replace probably the entire thing itself. So we have to pull it out. So while we were working on the Corvette and getting everything ready, we actually got a special delivery from Red Bull. They sent us an F1 car. They're delivering it here at my house and I'm actually planning to do a couple things with it. I'm planning on flipping over it. Really, I have no idea why Red Bull is realistically doing this and sending me the F1 car. They just want me to have it, but I want to get ready because I want to flip over it with my scooter and this ramp because F1 cars are realistically somewhat low and they usually run around 30 million dollars so I kind of can't hit the car so I need to uh, I need to get some practice in and see if I can even flip high enough with this ramp if the cord was on this finger you make it if the cord was on this finger it's close really oh my god <laughs> so crazy <laughs> Six, six, six. Woo. I was like, bro, I feel like I'm gonna clip everything in the 360 degree. All right, I'm getting that flip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous, I even flipped super harder than I needed to. Is it close? I felt so close. I don't even know if I wanna do that again. <laughs> 
<laughs> and now Red Bull has to hire me as their first ever professional scooter rider because they don't have one of those. And I believe that it's there's there's no reason not to. After getting the motor out far enough to where we could see the entire thing, we could just see how much damage there really was. Damn, dude, that's a fat hole. Oh my god. Look at this. Over here, look at Look, I can move the thing right here. Wow, look at that. It's part of the engine right there. This is like broke right here and then this part is all the way up in there. The fact that this went around in a circle and punched through the side of it. So what? Doo, 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 go, 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 through the whole thing. How does that happen? Because this thing's strong. Because this thing is what moves your car. So I want to see if the uh, uh, if the heads are good on this. We don't know until we look at it, but I want to make sure that they're good because I know that this thing, if it disconnects, it will shoot up and then shoot into this. So I want to make sure that all this stuff isn't bad because if it's shot up and it ruined this, that means we only have to buy the bottom portion of the engine. Once we pulled it out, we realized that the damage was so bad, it was unfixable. That is not supposed to be like that. So it's time for us to replace it with a new one. But the major problem is, is that I bought a Grand Sport. This is a good thing, but at the same time, a bad thing. Let me explain. There are three types of Corvettes. The base model Corvette, the Grand Sport, and the Z06. So the Grand Sport comes with factory modifications that are a little bit different than all of them. And the problem is, is that this Grand Sport isn't as popular as the other Corvettes, and they discontinued all of the supporting products for this car. So this is why this car was totaled. It's literally because insurance deemed the car unfixable. There is no way to properly put this car back to its original condition. But our second option is to look for a used motor at a junkyard. So we decided to call every junkyard at a hundred square mile radius to see if they had this motor. I was just calling on a whim just because he said hurry just in case. I'm so sorry that I can't help you with it. No, you're good. No, it's no problem at all. I'll figure it out. No worries. Literally no one had it. I do not know of anyone. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Not one place had this. I had no idea that this situation was going to be so tough. So even though we can't fix it, the car can be modified. And what that means is we can grab basically any Corvette engine and plop it right in here. We've been waiting a couple weeks for this to get here. And APA Customs from Arizona helped us get wholesale pricing on this. And this is from GM, a motor built for 525 horsepower. And it's going to be able to support all of the crazy parts that we're putting on this car to make it all possible. I'm excited. I've never purchased a brand new motor. I've only purchased used motors. It's interesting. <laughs> comes in a crate. It's that simple. So right now Nate's on the phone, literally with Texas Speed, trying to get all the parts for it. So overall, this build has gotten a little bit out of hand. It was just once a car that we were going to rebuild back to stock. But now with all the amazing support from Magnus and Supercharger, Texas Speed and Holly, we are turning this into a full-blown race car. So that's why we have bought a built motor from GM so it can handle the crazy amount of modifications that we are gonna be adding. To it's crazy to think that not only did we buy a brand new motor from GM, but we're gonna be taking this brand new motor completely apart to upgrade the internals that Texas Speed has sent us. I am learning through this process with you and something I've always wanted to do. I could look this up and do this on YouTube, but Nate has all the knowledge of doing this stuff. <laughs> These are all the parts that we're gonna be replacing. And that's what Texas Speed has sent us. So pretty much every moving part on the top end of this is being replaced. Oh, there we are. We're looking at here is basically the top of the piston. Remember how there's a hole out the side? So the connecting part of this, it went up and broke here and then shot out the side over here in this area. Super crazy process. We have to be super careful not hanging up on any of the wires, any of the hoses, catching anything. We want to make sure everything is like making it, clearing it. What a year it's been. I appreciate all of you for sticking by and watching through the entire video, just seeing my entire life and seeing what it was like being at 1 million subscribers and now almost 2 million subscribers. This year has been crazy. I moved in this house by myself, found a roommate online, and now I've got two more that are now moving in and living at the house now. It has just been a lot, but this next year is gonna be absolutely amazing. It's gonna be even better. I definitely feel there's gonna be a lot more of car content 
traveling and action stuff on the Funk Bros channel as I might be segueing a little bit more into the car content area as that's something I'm really enjoying currently. But shoot, uh, I don't know what else to say. Just like, I don't know, thanks for being there for me. I'd love to hear from all you. Whoever made it to the end, I always look at the comments. I'm always, I'm always here to talk and to just chat, say what's up, let me know you're there, how you liked it, what I can do better. I'm always looking at how I can improve my content, myself. I'm always wanna to try to be the best person I can be. My goals for uh, 2024 is to create a lot of car meets with no, no limits. I wanna build cars, I wanna create one of the biggest car shows that is regularly happening, maybe all across the US. That'd be a big goal of mine. Yes, I am still with Hannah. I love her very much. I will be doing videos with her from time to time. All the water slide, everything at Rush Park is gonna be updated on the Funk Bros channel. Everything car related is gonna be on Corey Funk channel, but I still want to create like a whole drift track over here. I wanna create a race course. I wanna create a pit bike track that is actually functioning and running. I wanna, uh, a go-kart track. I just wanna be building some of the craziest things. All these ideas are things that I'm wanting to do and things that we can look forward to 2024 to 2024. Five. But yeah, I love you. Thank you so much for being here with me. A lot more fun stuff to come. I've been doing this my whole life and I don't plan to stop. I love sharing the things that I'm doing because I, lo I love the community. That's really what I'm here for. I like creating something and, and showing it to you and you just being like, wow, this is awesome. This is awesome to see it through the lens and edited in this way where it just conforms such an amazing story. I've always loved that. That's been a really great aspect, creating. Like that's what it is, creating. Like, filming something, turning into something awesome and then presenting it to you as now a done product. And this stuff takes a long time. Just bear with me as I'm working through with my team and trying to make this the best it can be. Um, the goal is to make these videos turn around a lot quicker. The Corvette videos uh, sadly did not get out of time. The Corvette is actually done. I just haven't been able to uh, actually put it out to you. You might have actually seen it in the background, but it's all coming out soon. Thank you. <laughs>